During 1946, Oliver Bullard commenced development of the Southern Railway Leader class of locomotive, an experimental design featuring an articulated engine of a 060 plus 060 wheel configuration. It was an attempt to significantly improve steam engine design and reduce maintenance in order to extend the useful life of steam-based locomotives. Bullard's efforts were intended to eliminate many of the operational drawbacks of the then current steam locomotives. Development continued after the nationalisation of the railways in 1948 under the sponsorship of British Railways, BR, with the view that it could effectively compete with diesel and electric traction. A review of the Southern Railway in 1944 prompted the development effort of a unit which had high power and low maintenance and which could be used for both passenger and freight traffic. Thermic siphons, bogies and cabs at each end of the locomotive were all part of the new design and resulted in its unique, for a steam locomotive, modern diesel-like appearance. Sadly, some of these improvements proved to be not as successful as hoped, eventually contributing to its demise. Although five units were started, only one was ever completed. The completed locomotive was tested on the former Southern Railway network around the Brighton area. Unfortunately, due to the many problems with the design, unsympathetic reports on performance and growing political pressure surrounding the spiralling development costs, all locomotives of this class were scrapped by 1951. The prototype was built at Brighton Railway Works, with work commencing in 1946. An initial order for five locomotives was placed off drawing in 1946, with a further 31 ordered in 1947, although this was but a hollow gesture. The latter order was cancelled after the Southern Railway was taken into public ownership. Each of the two bogies had three cylinders, with the driving wheels connected by chains. The valve gear used the sleeve valve arrangement, which was the first steam locomotive of this type of valve since Paget's failed locomotive of 1908. The locomotive sat on the unusual bull-eyed Firth brown wheels, which were both lighter and stronger than their spoked wheel equivalent. Another innovative feature of the steam bogey was the ability to interchange them when faults occurred, an easy operation for maintenance staff when compared to the complexities of overhauling a regular steam locomotive. All leader boilers were constructed at Eastleigh and actually proved to be the least problematic area of the entire design. Even though testing was carried out, the leader prototype was never used on a revenue earning service because of the high risk of failure of the valve gear and the potential adverse publicity this could cause British railways. The firebox was not initially equipped with a firebrick arch, although one was retrofitted during the summer of 1950. The arch was problematic because it led to a tendency for flames to enter the cab at high outputs. A situation made worse by the narrowing of the firebox area. For ease of maintenance, the boiler, firebox and smoke box were encased in steel sheeting, which meant that the engine's shape resembled that of a modern diesel locomotive. The casing allowed the locomotive to be put through a carriage washing plant. Although the work on the other four locomotives stalled, the prototype leader emerged from Brighton as locomotive number 36001 in June 1949. The other four members of the initial order made by the Southern Railway, numbers 3600, 2-5, were at varying stages of construction by the end of the development period. However, with no funding being forthcoming, they were shelved and put into storage. Number 36001, for example, was immediately put into service trials using empty passenger carriage stock in the southeast of England. The official trial records kept at Brighton Works reported varying degrees of success and failure on the runs undertaken. Following trials, number 36001 displayed several flaws, such as heavy coal and water consumption, mechanical unreliability, untenable working conditions for both fireman and driver, loss of steam through the cylinder rings, and uneven weight distribution on the bogies. 
The leader was a bold attempt at pushing back the boundaries of contemporary steam locomotive design and, if successful, would have prolonged the life of steam on British railways. Sadly, this was not the case. We hope you've enjoyed this interesting little video on 36001 and its demise. Please like, share and subscribe for many more videos about interesting trains.